In the spirit of giving all Utah Jazz players a little bit of shine and due criticism, today's video will be about Simone Fontecchio. Now, he was born on December 9th in 1995. The Utah Jazz poached Fontecchio from the Spanish ACB League and more specifically the Team Basconia as announced by his agent a little over a year ago. Now, the interesting thing about it was it was for a two-year contract for a man that had never played in the NBA before. That being said, the infamous Woj bomb dropper himself said that Fantecchio, despite being 26, was the best international small forward prospect across the globe outside of the NBA. Now, the question then becomes, well, how did it pan out? In his first season at the age of 26, he ended up playing a little over 14 and a half minutes a night. He averaged 6.3 points, 1.7 rebounds, 0.8 assists, 0.3 steals, 0.2 blocks, and averaged 1.2 makes from beyond the arc per game. Now, the issue was he ended up shooting a total of 36.9% from the field, 79.5% from the free throw line, as well as 33% from beyond the arc. Now, he did end up having a more encouraging end to the season compared to the beginning when he was first pulled over, and that was to be expected as he adjusted to the NBA game. He played in a total of 52 NBA regular season matches. Coming into this season, people expected him to be a little bit more into the rotation, but it took him a little bit to crack the surface. That being said, this could be slightly attributed to the fact that Lowry Markkinen ended up being put at the small forward position full time, as well as John Collins being brought over from the Hawks in a trade deal that saw the Jazz give up really no present-minded pieces. Combine that with Walker Kessler at the center spot, Omer Yurt 7 off the bench, and even Kelly Olynyk playing those spot forward minutes, and there's just not much room for Fantecchio to crack the rotation. That changed recently with more injuries, however. It saw him starting at the small forward position once Lowry went down. And across 18 games this season, he plays in 17.7 minutes, scoring 7.2 points, 2.5 rebounds, 1.2 assists, 0.4 steals, 0.4 blocks, and 1.6 made threes on average per night. He shoots a significantly better 43.1% from the field, 87.5% from the free throw line, as well as 37.7% from beyond the arc. Now, obviously, if those were on a larger sample size, the numbers would be even more tantalizing, particularly coming from those percentages. That being said, his overall field goal percentage is just lower because he does attempt more three-pointers as opposed to shots with inside the three-point line for his shot attempts. But that was to be expected with him being brought over to the Utah Jazz roster. Now, this all culminates in the fact that Fontecchio, alongside Yurt Seven in the starting lineup, are now 2-0 since the absence of Lowry Markkinen with his hamstring injury on his left leg. That being said, it kind of shows a level of depth that the Utah Jazz have sneakily underneath the surface. While Simon Fantecchio obviously isn't a wealthy replacement for Lowry Markkinen's scoring load and just defensive versatility, he does provide a certain sense of shooting touch as well as a considerably higher level of defense than he was previously playing in the last season. In a showing of good faith, Will Hardy actually left him on the court the entirety of the overtime period just the other night against the Portland Trailblazers in a really tough nail-biter overtime affair. That being said, he's had some good games, some bad games, and some downright ugly games. Lately, things haven't been looking too hot from beyond the arc as he's shooting 3 of 15 across the past two games against the Timberwolves and the Trailblazers, but previous to that, he was 7 of 16 against the Pelicans and the Grizzlies. Now, overall, obviously, he shoots 37.7% on a decent enough volume for us to respect it and assume that it's something he can keep doing. I would consider the game against the Trailblazers where he had 7 points off 3 of 12 shooting from the field, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 blocks to be one of his better performances despite his absolutely egregious shooting splits. The reason being, he was solid on defense. He was not getting absolutely rolled over. He wasn't getting burst past on the first step. He was being physical on the glass, leading to those five rebounds that he had. He also was being a very solid playmaker, being willing to make that extra pass when he knew he didn't have a good look, which was exhibited best by the fact that he still continued to shoot the shots that he was taking because they were, in essence, good shots. They just weren't falling for him that night. And so at a certain point, he began to make that extra pass and it paid dividends. Now, the two blocks are indicative of his ability to play defense a little bit better than most people actually expect. Now, obviously, we understand that having blocks and having steals doesn't mean you're a great defender, but it usually indicates that you're probably better at defense than somebody that doesn't have them at all. Now, obviously, he only averages 0.4 blocks a night and 0.4 steals a night, but overall, he's improved his craft to allow himself to make more plays on the defensive side of the ball, which allowed him to stay on the court in tough games when he's not shooting well from the floor. 
particularly against the Grizzlies, it got a little bit ugly a little bit early. Now, when he finally came on, he ended up hitting two or three threes back to back to back, which continued to give the Utah Jazz just a little bit of hope, even though they ultimately ended up losing that game. Now at six foot seven and 201 pounds, Fantecchio obviously has the size to play solid defense and he obviously has a size to get his shot off against taller opponents. That being said, at the age of 27, there's not much higher that you can see his ceiling being. Likely meaning that he's going to be a continuous player that gives solid production off of the bench, which is completely commendable and respectable. And as the time goes on, I believe that he will be a mainstay in the rotation, even when Lowry comes back, if he doesn't end up in a situation where he's playing the 28 and 35 and 32 minutes that he's been playing recently and goes back down to actually playing 15 or 16 minutes a night because he has been fairly effective in the shot attempts that he takes in those matches. And he also hasn't been getting exploited on defense, even though he clearly is one of the more easy easier people to pick apart on the defensive side of the ball. With that in mind, we understand that him starting at all is simply because Larry Markkinen got injured. That's not to say he's a terrible basketball player, but he just has a role that he fills to the best of his ability. And since he's been able to been called up, he's been doing the most of it, but you can clearly see that the efficiency just isn't there to replace what Lowry was giving the team though they've been able to pull out some very tough wins in the process. With that in mind, once Lowry returns to the lineup healthy and 100% ready to go, I believe that Fantecchio will be removed back to the bench and he'll be seeing more spot minutes within the 10 to 17 minute range. That being said, I believe his shot attempts will ultimately drop down to between three and five, and he will be relegated to that catch and shoot duty more often than not. So his three point percentage overall might take a little bit of a hit just because he hasn't seen the floor that much in the games that he will be playing in. But at the same time, every time he touches a ball, he's going to have the green light to let that ball fly. Thank you guys for watching this video. As always, it's your boy Ray Hoops. Make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, like the video, drop your comments down below. Let me know if you think Fantecchio is going to be a mainstay, similar to how we felt about Yurt 7 when we made the past video about him playing spot minutes and actually playing more minutes than we actually originally anticipated. With that in mind, I believe Fantecchio has a little bit of that similar usability, though not on the same volume of shot attempts. With that in mind, thanks for tuning in this video. As always, good morning, good evening, good night, no matter where you are on the globe watching. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.